And we're going to be talking about the present state of the Washington fresh market um, and kind of the outlook um, as we move forward over the next several years, the potential. So I'm going, I have a list of questions that I'm going to ask, but obviously feel free to uh, chime in at any point if you have your own questions um, or want any other additional input that perhaps hasn't been set up on the panel. Uh, we definitely need your perspective on this, so by all means, chime in. Uh, okay. Uh, the first question that I had, so do you guys know of any Washington organizations or councils that are uh, support fresh market production, particularly with strawberries involved? No. <laughs> Actually, you know, as, as Julie said, I am more familiar with the production in Southwest Washington and Oregon, which is kind of our home territory, but I have been coming up here a fair amount and working with the Washington Strawberry Commission. So I'd be interested to know if there are organizations out there, mainly for the Northwest Berry Foundation, which is our thing, that we could coordinate and work with the industry where we could do things regionally and there'd be organizations with Washington Fresh Market who could coordinate with us. But I'm not aware of that structure being in place but and I was even thinking from the area of farmers markets or any other um, organizations like that that may be okay. set up as well. No, and I'm and I'm not familiar enough with it to know that. Rob, do you know of any? No, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, I mean, I guess specific organizations that are that are formed around berries and, and marketing in particular. Um, I mean, I know that, you know, from our perspective, doing a lot of direct, direct to uh, consumer sales. I mean, there's lots of farmers markets, food hubs, um, different sort of community level, you know, organizations and market outlets. But as far as, you know, regional wide, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if there are. I, I echo that. I, I'm not aware of anything for us here in the Northwest. We always look to the to California or, or even Oregon that we're a little bit ahead of us here. Um, so you kind of glean off whatever you can to, and, but then you have to adapt it to where, what your operation's doing. Sure, sure. So then the recently the Washington Strawberry Commission was disbanded and I know, um, I kind of want to know what that means for the Washington industry. I know it was mainly a process type of commission originally, but I mean, does that, how does that factor in now for, you know, the remaining Washington growers in the state? Well, it was a vehicle in which we could address um, uh, issues as a group, um, even though it was difficult to gather per, um, the working parties, the farmers, the growers together, but um, it's still, if there was a need, a, um, a unified need, that, that was the vehicle to address those issues. Um, Does anybody else have any other comments about? I, I think it's a, a missed opportunity that, that it disbanded, but we'll, we'll see about that. It was a state mandated way to bring in funds for strawberry research and, and outreach. So, but I think the whole region, we've been going through this whole transition between uh, the process production and the fresh market. And obviously it's a symptom of that. And so hopefully something will rise from the ashes of that for the fresh market to be able to, to have a similar way to concentrate resources for everyone. Okay, so um, in your opinion, where does Washington need to be concentrating their resources? Um, is it more of a, you know, research need for fresh market, breeding, marketing, consumer awareness that there is availability for more than even just June bearing production here? 
Richard, do you want to oh, take a spin? I, I think it's all of that. I mean, but firstly, we need to gather the, the people, the, the interested parties, or, or find who's there, and then determine the priorities. But yeah, like the other commissions, um, all, you know, the, the production practices, a lot of that you can glean off of the other, other berry crops and other areas. But I think like food safety, I mean, that to me would be a big one. You know, the audits and and as a part of marketing to promote yourself, I think that that's a big area that a need to gather people around. Rob, any input? Yeah, I mean, I think I would uh, <clears throat> I would echo that. I mean, I think all of those areas are really important. I think from my perspective, um, you know, really consumer awareness and, and marketing are really important. Um, you know, we've seen you know we'll be you know viva farms who we do a lot of direct you know into the seattle area and we'll see even you know times a year when we've got you know tons of berries available and you know people are you know as soon as peaches come on and stone fruit from other sides we're just seeing that drop off and people are then buying strawberries and from california and there's still a ton of availability in washington so i think that as you mentioned that people are you know associate the june bearing varieties but realizing that there are other varieties available and that kind of building that demand is something that's really going to support uh, more, more production here. Uh, my perspective is a little bit different. I certainly agree. And, and you guys know that that whole angle a lot better than I do. The, the, the resource I see of critical need right now from the research end is the breeding programs for uh, Northwest strawberries. We're really on the verge of not having uh, strawberries bred for the Northwest and being completely dependent on California, especially for the uh, day neutrals, that might be the direction that will go anyway. But at the moment, there are programs in existence in Oregon, Washington, and BC who are all working with day neutrals uh, for our area. But all three programs are relatively weak, and they're probably losing funding as we're going on. And over the next couple of years, there's going to be things going on with, with breeder changes, with, with other priorities, where it is very possible we'll end up with a very, very limited selection of, of varieties not bred in the Northwest. And right now, if you order plants, uh, Lawson Canyon is saying they want to know April of the year before you want to plant to get your order into the for Northwest plants. So that's the main thing on my mind at the moment. All right. Um, I'm just looking around in case anybody has their hand up. I do. And... Um... <clears throat> Hi, I apologize if this is an unpolitic unpo question, but I'm not from here. Um, but why did the, why did the, what was it called, the Washington Strawberry Commission, why did that disband? Well, it was mainly a process uh, uh, commission. So um, just the volume was going down every year. So assessments and so the effectiveness of the funds that we did gather um, had less and less of an impact, and um, we didn't get traction on, on fresh involvement to keep the momentum going. But the industry really is shifting um, out of process and into and somewhat into fresh, but fresh is pretty fragmented around the state. So, yeah. So how at this point can uh, fresh market acres receive benefits or, uh, you know, with marketing help, research assistance, um, and really does the fresh market need that help at this point? Or, you know, is there a need for that? Tom? Do I start at this side? Sure. <laughs> Well, I think uh, what Wendy put together for, for this 
USDA uh, state block grant is certainly one area. There are funding out, there is funding out there. And the Northwest Berry Foundation that we started in 2014, this is one of the impetuses is to be able to support some of these smaller uh, crops. But again, you need to have an infrastructure for people to write those grants, to turn them in, to perform them. So with government funding from those sources, it comes with a need for some type of organizational structure. And that's a little bit what I'm worried about, about the industry at the moment. Um, maybe I'll leave it at that. Rob, anything you want to add? Um, yeah, I think that, you know, certainly um, through, you know, these funding sources um, mentioned, you know, especially crop block programs and, and others, you know, ways to sort of form, um, yeah, an and, and organized marketing campaign, whether it's, you know, a label around it, Washington Grown, whatever it is, like developing that would be something that's really important. But again, it needs, it needs someone to lead it. It needs organization. It needs buy-in. And, you know, the, the relatively fractured nature is, is, is hard to overcome. <clears throat> yeah, I, I agree. agree with all that. Okay. Um, what, what do you think is the overall outlook for Washington with regards to fresh market? I mean, you guys mentioned that it's fragmented and, you know, because there aren't really organizations directly situated to, you know, assisting the entire state. What do you see as um, the main obstacles, I guess? I know we talked about a few, but to get past this to see uh, Fresh Market be more of a collaborated effort within the state. Richard? Really to, to gather a critical mass big, large enough to make an Im impact and, and generate um, uh, funding and activities. Um, and then setting priorities. I mean, just like the commission does, their their function. Um, yeah. Yeah. Rob, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I think <clears throat> I think part of that is going to be sort of expanding. Um, you know, who who are the folks that are involved? You know, there's a lot of uh, newer farmers getting involved. A lot of folks that maybe traditionally haven't been involved in that level of statewide organization um, that I work with. That I think kind of opening that door, doing outreach to folks that aren't as connected to those existing networks. It's gonna be something that's um, really important. I think there's a, there's more people out there that I think could have a role to play that aren't necessarily being touched by that right now. So the, that kind of marketing and outreach, I think will be important. And I just wanted to add to a question on that. Do you think it's a like an education component that needs to be added or do you feel like, you know, these small farms or new farmers coming in have enough of a perspective to really be able to jump in with both feet. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 it's, it's both, you know, I mean, I think it's, it's, uh, it, there's definitely education because I think a lot of those folks aren't, they, they don't know what the existing networks are, but they do have a perspective, certainly that, that as time goes on, like, it's like bringing people into the fold now because we need that, that next generation of people who are able to kind of push that forward. Yeah, you know, it, it really is a chain. You've got to have all of these pieces in place, and I think all of us can, but you've also got to have that organization to, bring, to, to put that chain together. Uh, there's a number of obstacles, but the main, I, I, obviously, there's going to be a lot of fresh market strawberries sold in Washington, and that's a growing market. There's going to be more and more. We know that. It's where those berries are going to be coming from. And there needs, and we've seen this in Oregon, is, is educating the growers down there. At least it was mainly cold uh, change that they really needed to learn to get into larger markets. I think farmers markets, the fresh local, these folks have got a system worked out where I think it seems to be fairly stable for their individual operations. But to really build the overall industry, I think you've got to get into the, the supermarkets and be able to compete uh, on, with the California fruit that's in there. Uh, and to do that, that's a lot of work with the 
for a consistent supply. And you guys, know, a bunch of you know, know this really well, but to have that market demand and then have the growers to supply that, it's a, it's kind of a bootstrapping operation to build that. But I think it can be done if there's enough infrastructure and within the industry, or within the growers, to be able to bring that about. But I, I see it as needing to be almost a grassroots effort. Yeah, we need a core group of growers or a grower to lead the way, uh, be successful, set the example that that opens the path and, and shows the way for the, for our group. And then I think from that, I mean, it's all about being successful and profitable. And and if you had growers that are doing that with strawberries, that just gathers you know more together on a common cause. Um, I'm going to bring it just, oh, actually somebody has a question. Though. So do you think that like, uh, like a strawberry grower is going to go off and people like to be So he's talking about having a possibility of having the strawberry growers go up. Yeah, the size of the operations now that might take that to, to, to create the market, you know, to, so, so you have the volume. You need, you need the volume, the quality, and consistency. And so in a co-op, though, you need to get along. you got to have your, your mission statement and, and your, your goals set, and you've all got to believe in those and follow that. It's all about the quality, you know, and your, so your product's got to sell. So once you get together and you can produce, it's, it's easy to produce, but the market and sell and sell consistently it, to grow that market share. I mean, the, the market's out there. I mean, strawberries, we're dealing with one of the best, uh, most popular products in the produce department. So we have the core to build off of. We just need to organize to get into the markets there. I, oh. Yeah, it's education. Exactly. Well, uh, Northwest Berries, uh, education is what's important. They're a, a short season product, a superior taste, and, but they don't have the shelf life that most California berries do. It's the trade-off. So there needs to be a way to teach the, the, the buyer that this is not a year-round product. You need to be thinking about this early June. You need to be better, better get them before late July or your windows are gonna be closed. And that's what we do strawberries. That's what the, our big thing is, is trying to, we get people calling early May, no, they're not ready. And then we get them calling in September looking for strawberries because they're in the markets because of the California. So we're, we're doing tons of education in our area, but it needs to be bigger, in my opinion, to be able to grow, like you say. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's that, the soft berry problem with the shipping to a, uh, Safeway or an Albertson, the shelf life stuff starts, they don't like short shelf lives, and that's where we live in strawberries in this area. And, and that's where the need and the want comes from. If you get a unified group that can, that have the same purpose, and that's then where the researchers come in to solve those issues, you know, so we need a collective issue to gather around and, and, and work towards and organize, and, and a lot of that's the funding part, you know, it's chicken and egg thing a lot of times you know, where, where do you start, but, um, it, yeah. Can I comment on that? Yeah, too? sure, go will ahead. You let me? Yes, Tom. Uh, you know, this is one of the problems we've been looking at regionally, is the, the decline of the process thing has left all three, BC, Oregon, and Washington, with less overall production and obviously less economy of scale. But if you put all three regions together, on the fresh market and you start getting a better economy of scale. And I don't know how to do this yet, but it seems like that would be a path forward that should be explored more because we're all facing those same problems. In Oregon, BC, Washington, it's the same issues as far as uh, overall strawberry fresh market production. Um, because you're right, you're right is we've got a superior product. The, the uh, everybody agrees with that, but it's a short shelf life. 
that you need to deal with? Um, I want to just in general, looking at the audience, can you, if you're willing to put up your hand, if you market direct with um, any strawberries that you sell? Okay, what about to uh, specifically to farmers markets? And to uh, like wholesale or grocery distribution? Okay, and I guess, you know, probably on farm or farm stand type of situation as well. So it seems like the majority of you are trying to do it all in many ways. Um, and each one of these avenues is a little different and probably has a little bit of different expectation uh, with the fruit. Um, I do want to say that when we did do some of these meetings in Oregon, I feel like the very first meeting was a replica of this, you know, a lot of these discussions were happening there of, of you know the needs for education both from a consumer side as well as from a grower side um, it seems to be maybe a little more interest with small farm and and newer growers here but i think the point still remains is um having a component surrounding you know the needs that you guys are discussing we're kind of we've got about four minutes left so i don't know if anybody else has a Question or comment? All right, uh, you pick only, hands up. And then what was the other one? Such market only. And then process market only. Um, and then, or both, both processed um, or fresh. And fresh, I guess. Is there anyone that does mainly wholesale? Uh, so yeah, the majority. I mean, their bulk of their crops direct, probably. Yeah. One more question. Yeah. How many of you are planning on expanding your strawberry acreage over the next couple of years? Pretty much staying steady, or okay, or decreasing. Okay. Um, any last questions? I have one. Is there anyone that only does strawberries or, or is it a mix of all the berries? So mixed, mixed top, uh, system? Yeah. yeah. Um, just one additional, when you were talking about your outlets and you said wholesale and it seemed like it was wholesale and direct mainly. What do you mean by that? When you are you talking about in your own label or either way? To me, wholesale is just outside your farm stand, farm farmers market. So if you're going to local uh, retailers in in stores mainly, grocery stores. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah. So are you? Or are, are they? Are you also using major marketers? Um, um, by that I mean, like you know, a, a Driscoll or a a, um, a Wish Farms or something like. I that. don't believe so. I mean, again, the focus I think most of direct market on farm sales, and then like what we did, um, any overage we would develop outside um, retailers, the grocery chains. Um, over time, I was shifting. I'm no longer in it, though. But we we would we were shifting to uh, more wholesale to get volumes. You know. So last question. Well, one thing that was mentioned, and uh, with with the transition into fresh, what's happened with the day neutrals is you start getting a glut of fruit in August, and that's become the other. Now that's a new issue that we never had before. So now what do you do? June is fine. Now what do you do in August? Yeah, no, that's that's a really good point. I just want to ask how many strawberry growers in Washington State? That's a tricky question. Um, I mean, Wendy, do you have any specs on that that you're going to be... I mean, it's really hard to say, especially when, you know, the commission's being disbanded. There's no real organizations to collect those numbers. Um, that's a little more up in the air in the state, which is, again, one of the reasons why we're uh, 
just having this discussion in general. Um, you know, honestly, we are going to finish up this panel. I really want to thank you guys. This is great. There's going to be a, a grower buyer panel coming up also. So some of these questions could overlap in that um, and expand um, during that segment. So thank you guys. Thank you.